name is Mike Aben and welcome to my KSP campaign. We are here with MapSat 8. Actually, this is the second time you have seen this particular vehicle. The first time was a couple of episodes ago where it ran into an unfortunate, well, it was kind of a unit kind of a mistake. Yeah, yeah I had a smart part to deploy the parachutes and it decided to deploy the parachutes at 65 meters rather than what should have happened at 65 kilometers. Uh, well, I guess it didn't decide. I guess I screwed up on the units. But as you can see now, we are well over 65 meters and everything is going fine. And in fact, this is a pretty trivial launch altogether to remind people MapSat 8 is on its way to Minmus. Uh, as a mapping satellite, I have a contract. You can see it down there in the bottom right to do a high resolution scan of Minmus's surface. So while this thing is ascending and while we get it on its way to Minmus, why don't we talk about what we got coming up in this episode. Uh, follow very shortly after this one you will be seeing the launch of Kerbal Comsat 2, a sister satellite to Kerbal Comsat 1 which you also saw a couple of episodes ago. So we won't spend much time with either of those. The main thing in this particular mi mission is that the Crying 3 is getting finally to Minmus. The Crying 3 has Carol, our scientist, for a Minmus mission. We're actually going to do a little bit of scientist swapping. But then what's going to happen is Jeb, Bill, and Carol are going to go down to Minmus's surface and attempt to reap as much science as I possibly can reap using the surface science pack equipment. So, why don't we take a look at our satellite here as it makes its burn out towards Minmus. I think it's a rather cute little guy. Anyway, why don't we move on to Kerbal Comsat 2, which is just in the process of finishing off its circularization burn. Because the previous launch was so small, it actually only took a few hours to recondition the launch pad. So that was lucky. I was able to fire these two off in pretty rapid succession. Anyway, like I mentioned, this is the sister craft to Kerbal Comsat 1, which you saw a couple of episodes ago. Went into Keo stationary orbit, and this one has got the exact same plan. The big dish uh, antennas are for communicating with each of the planets in the Kerbal system. So as you can see, I have a total of six of them, three for the inner planets of Moho, Eve, and Duna, <laughs> and three for the outer planets of Dresjul and Elu. And yeah, we can take a look out here. This is now a MapSat view, and now you can see I got, oh, this looks nice, communication lines going out to every single one of the planets. So with this, I think my interplanetary communication system, at least around Kerbin, is now complete. I don't see why I would need to put out anything else. I'm now to, able to communicate with anything in the Kerbal system. So uh, with that, why don't we make our way to Minmus? Where the Karayim 3 is finally arriving at Minmus Station. And just to remind people kind of what it's roundabout journey was. Uh, the original mission was to send these folks off to the moon. And uh, after sending them on a trajectory that would intercept with the moon, I began to realize that, wow, you know, Carol's not going to gain any experience from this. She would be much better off going to Minmus and uh, well, a variety of resources that you'll be seeing in future episodes weren't ready to be deployed to the moon just yet. So I thought, you know what? Why don't we do ourselves a little slingshot around the moon and get going to Minimus? We got the time and it sounds like it might be fun. So we are going to be transferring Carol uh, over to the Karayan 1. The Karayan 1 has been sitting here. Well, actually, it hasn't quite been sitting here. It's been collecting some orbital science around Minmus, but it's all done with that. So now it's just waiting for the transfer to happen. So Carol, you're going to the Kegel 6. That's a lander that's going to be going down to the surface of Minmus very, very shortly. In fact, that's what we're going to be spending the bulk of this episode doing. And McNand, now having done several orbits of Minmus, is going to go over to the Karayan 3, and uh, the Karayan 3 is going to depart 
back to the moon. So, uh, yeah, we're, Crime 3 is not going to spend a lot of time here. We're all we're, we're just going to do the transfer and then uh, undock and head on out of here. So we're going to need to plot an encounter with the moon. And I'm not going to wait for things to be ideal. Uh, I've wasted enough time with this. I want to get these buys back reasonably quickly. So we're just going to take what we're going to get. We're going to blast out of this polar orbit around Mimis the best that we can and look for getting whatever moon encounter we can get. And I first got one after swinging by Kerbin. That was tempting, but uh, that was 19 days away. So I played around a little bit more. Ended up with this encounter. It's a little over 14 days from now. Not particularly ideal, but like I said, I'm just going to have to take what I can. So that burn is going to be in about 50 minutes. In the meantime, no reason to wait. I think it's time to get the show on with the Kegel 6. So we are now undocked. And of course, we are all crewed up and stocked up. And according to Kerbal Engineer, now that I'm free of the station, I can see that this vessel has 1,592 meters per second of delta V. Getting down to the surface and getting back to here probably cost, I don't know, around 450 would be my guess, meters per second. So that should leave us a fair amount to be able to do some hops. We're going to start by putting ourselves down to a lower orbit than this one. So I want to get down to about a 10 kilometer orbit. We'll just sort of start burning away from the station. And then once we're down in that lower orbit, we'll get the Korion on its way and out of here. And then we'll start thinking about picking ourselves a landing spot. Here you can still see the Korion hanging about. Remember, it has to wait for its burn. Well, why don't we cut to being down in this lower orbit? I'm looking at ScanSat here. I'm trying to pick out a spot. And I'm looking for a spot to combine biomes I've never been to and biomes that are close by. And I'm looking around around here in the south polar biome but there are some nearby slopes that are almost like right next door so i think i'm going to start there and then see where we can go from there so we'll use waypoint manager to set up a waypoint and then we'll start our descent now we're going to try and go to as many biomes as we can and the record Set back way back in episode 49 by Bob in the Kegel 1, a solo lander I had back then. Bob got himself to four biomes. And you gotta know, Jeb is chomping at the bit to be able to beat that record. It's a little darker here near the landing zone than I might like, but it should be all right. Was the issue with these polar regions? The lighting is always a little bit unpredictable. Oh, and of course, it's not this Jeb who wants to beat Bob's record. Bill and Carol are along, and they are just as eager. Bill and Carol, by the way, have been both on the surface of the moon, but for both of them, this is going to be their first time on the surface of Minmus. Carol, in fact, being the first pilot of the Kegel one that you saw in that little flashback there with Bob. Jeb, however, has never been on the surface of another body other than Kerbin. So clearly this is a big event for him. And we're not, I'm not that interested in going right by where the waypoint is. As long as I end up in the poles biome and nearby the slopes biome, I will be happy and just to have a landing spot that ain't too sloped itself. The slope here is bouncing between how oh, two and four degrees. I think this will do. Let's kill off the rest of our horizontal velocity and just let ourselves fall. We're still about a kilometer and a half from the surface, so should be a comfortable landing. I can see I'm still in orbit. I hate that. 
I seem to have issues with it not going to surface when it should. So let's push us a little bit more again this way. We are still over the poles. I want to be pretty close to the slopes, so. though. And we'll just let ourselves fall down to the surface. We are now under a kilometer, which is about 500 meters. Let's start killing off some of this velocity, while at the same time pushing that retrograde icon to the top of the nav ball. We're now pretty much falling straight down. You can see the lights now on the surface, under 100 meters. I was also thinking as I was coming down, positioning that solar panel so that it will be picking up a reasonable amount of rays. And touch. Yep, we're down. Well, that's not bad. In fact, that will do nicely. It is a little bit dark. Here, we'll just turn the SAS off and it's sitting there well. Am I getting electricity? I am getting electricity, so everything is ducky. So why don't we start off with getting Jeb out here. This is his occasion and planting the flag, Kegel 6, Jeb, Bill, and McNair, I mean, sorry, I mean Carol. <laughs> and then we'll get Bill out, and Bill's gonna need to set up all of the surface science pack equipment. Uh, a couple of episodes ago, I'm sure you, hopefully, you may remember, I had uh, quite a bit of problem with this stuff exploding. So partly because of that, I'm going to be attaching it to the side of the vehicle. But also, um, the other reason I want to attach it, because it's a pain to set this stuff up. So if I attach it all to the side of the vehicle, I want to do hops. I don't need to reset it up each time. I'm hoping this should work out well, that it won't throw off the balance on the vehicle too badly. We'll have to see in just a little bit. And then, of course, we're going to start collecting the equipment. The other advantage that this has is that it is now using the power of the vehicle and the electricity being generated, especially by that big Gigantor solar panel, uh, making transmitting. I don't have to worry about running out of electricity. Uh, we can run the experiments from the comfort of inside the vehicle as well. Carol doesn't have to go outside to run the experiment. So attaching to the vehicle does make everything quite a bit easier. And we're going to be transmitting everything that we can. And that's what's nice with the surface science pack stuff is that uh, all of the science can be transmitted. You can transmit it right away. You don't have to wait till you're back on curb and surface. And as far as the equipment goes with the surface science pack, we have the surface graviometer. Uh, the surface magnetometer, the passive seismic experiment, the interior heat probe, the retro reflector, the rare and sensitive neutron ion, de neutral ion detector, not neutron ion, neutral ion detector, solar wind spectrometer, and then there's a bit of science in that central station. And all of that kind of varies between about, at the low end, about 36 science, at the high end, about 90 science. So there's a lot of science there to get. And of course, we do have a materials bay, mystery goose, seismic accelerometer, the thermometer, the barometer, the gravioli detector, all that stock stuff. Of course, we're going to be doing EVA reports and a crew report. We've never been in this biome before. So there's a lot of science to collect here. And of course, Carol's going to go out and collect all of that science too do what she can. I also made sure to make sure Carol and Bill each planted their own flag to get that little bit of extra experience for them as well. But then I think it is time to hop over to the nearby slopes biome. And this was just the tiniest of little hops. It was literally pretty much right next door. I do have some weirdness going on with the menus. You can see them pinned down there next to the Portraits. I will rotate this, make sure we're getting some good solar exposure when we're down on the surface. 
Yeah, I can't get those menus to go away. That actually had to do with ScanSat, and I found out later that if I just reopened up the ScanSat map and closed it again, I could then close those things. It had to do with that they were open while I had the ScanSat window open. Just So it was easy to fix. You won't see it in the future. Okay, we are over the slopes. We are now coming down. It was that easy. And this little transfer only cost me 52 meters per second. Still have lots left over. And of course here, whoa, it's, it is sloped. But we brought it down, there we are, okay. And of course we're gonna repeat the process. We had been to the slopes before, but not with the surface science equipment, surface science pack equipment, so lots of science to collect. So we'll just have Carol, she's just finishing off collecting that science. And then I thought, why don't I give her the honor of planting a flag at this second landing location. We'll do a quick last minute surface sample and then we will plant our flag. There we go. And let's see, what's Carol going to say? Let's, oh, the flag just fell over. Oh, wow, that's a bummer. Well, anyway, uh, Kegel 6, landing 2, it's Carol, Jeb. You think you could tell the difference. That was weird with the uh, flag falling over. I've never had that happen before. Story goes apparently that the Apollo 11 fl flag fell over as well when uh, right at takeoff. Not quite sure if that's a true story. Sounds reasonable. Besides being bleached white, apparently that's also true. <laughs> but anyway, with that accomplished, it was time to start thinking about where to go next. And the decision was made to start, keep heading westward. And that way we'll stay in the sun. If I go eastward, I'll end up going into the night side of Minmus and then we have electricity issues. So we're gonna go westward and there's some midlands, some highlands, some lowlands, and then there's some flats and some greater flats at a at an even further distance. So we'll try to see how much we can get. So what I'm aiming for is just above the polar region, which is the region in brown on the mini-map. There is a bit of Midlands and then a bit of Highlands. Oop, I need to burn further this way. Oh, that was a little bit too far. <laughs> so the first sort of darker green area is Midlands. So I want to touch down in there, and then the area just after that is Highlands. So as you can see, I'm just looking at my trajectory on the mini-map, sort of pushing my way there. That's looking pretty good. We'll just cut a little bit further in our hop, and you can see here I'm coming up to this, this ridge here and it's looking pretty sloped. So I think what I'll do is I'll go for the top part of this hill. It looks a little bit flatter up there. But then once up there, no, this is definitely not as flat as it looked further below. Yeah, so what I think I'll do, is burn a little bit to the right here, get over this ridge. get down this slope part and park her down in there. It doesn't look too bad down that way. Of course, all this farting about is ruining my efficiency. You'll also notice if you take a look at the mini map that I uh, completely blew by the Midlands that I was initially aiming for and I'm now over the Highlands. And I do need to get myself down before I end up in the slopes. But what I'm thinking about, yeah, I'm thinking I'm going to be cutting my velocity right around here. There we go. Unfortunately, I am still heading up. And that's what got that kind of wacky thing there happening with the nav ball. But all I had to do is drop down to the surface put her down, get some highlands, maybe we'll hop back to the midlands, I don't know, but I need to get this down. Whoa, whoa, we're sliding. 
<laughs> and we're not stopping. I'll keep the SAS on. We'll just kind of toboggan down here and get to the point where this comes to a stop and then we'll we'll get our science. Unfortunately, our toboggan ride carried us right into the slopes biome, which we had just been in. So that's not particularly useful. So I needed to take off again, head up back to the top of this hill. And by the time I finally got it down in some highlands, I had expended 509 meters per second of my delta V, leaving me only 764 meters per second left. I need, I'd like to have about 250 or so to get back to the station. So really, this is probably leaving me with just one more hop that I can do. And that's provided I don't mess it up like I just did this one. But of course, we collected the science just like we did before. And Jeb got Jeb to go out, plant the flag, and apologize for that crappy ride. And he can't let Bob beat him. No. Now, just remind people, Bob hit four biomes with the Kegel 1. You can see here Bob's route. I didn't put flags at every one of his stops. I didn't think about it till I got towards the end. But by the end here, he was uh, four biomes that he hit. So, with only 764 meters per second left, Mission Control decided we're only going to do one more hop. And we best make it to a biome that we had not been to before. So, what we're going for is these flats over here and if possible once we've touched down in the flats we'll decide whether we can visit more or not and this will tie Bob Jeb's not particularly happy with that it does give Jeb a distance record he traversed more of a lateral distance than Bob did but still not particularly satisfying for uh, our competitive pilot now, I've just cut my throttle because I don't want my Apple Apsis to get up too high. You can see there on the mini-map that my trajectory is still not meeting our target where I put a waypoint. But what I'll do is I'll wait until I am up at Apple Apsis where I am moving more or less horizontally. And then push myself laterally from there. I do like having the... ScanSat mini-map available for this. Help me line this up. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Distance-wise, I think I'm good. Just need to pull it a little bit to the left. There we are. Okay, I'm happy with that. So all we have to do now is to ride that to where we're away point, cut our vertical velocity, our horizontal velocity, sorry, and then just drop down to the surface. And it's funny, doing a hop, especially big ones like this one, pretty much costs the same, as far as I can see, as it would cost just to go into low orbit and to come back down again. So you do have to sort of budget for that. And by the time we got ourselves down to the surface, well, there was only 304 meters per second left in the can. And Mission Control, much to Jeb's disappointment, decided to call it. Our next burn was going to be to get into orbit and to rendezvous with uh, Minmus Station and to end this mission. So there you go, four biomes, it's a tie. But while Carol was out collecting all of the science and repeating what we've been doing in the other biomes, Jeb was thinking... And Jeb was thinking, you know, there is another lander up there in Minmus Station and quite a bit of fuel. In fact, if we take a look up here at Minmus Station, we will see, with everything all connected together, there's 324 meters per second left. Uh, so clearly the Korion 1 has more than enough fuel to get itself back home, which only costs about 160 meters per second. It only needs to get itself, itself back home, not the whole station that's here. So, oh, looking at map view here, I can see we are coming pretty much over our landing zone where the Kegel 6 is. If we're going to do this, we should do this now. So what I did is I transferred half of the fuel into the Kegel 3. It has a probe core, so it can fly autonomously, and it has KAS fuel pipes. Actually, Kegel, Kegel 6 has KAS fuel pipes, so we can land and transfer some fuel over to the Kegel 6, 
We'll leave the Kegel 3 down there on the surface. I don't care about it. Maybe squeeze out a few more hops and get Jeb his record. Now, after docking here, I can see I got 1,115 meters per second left. If I subtract about 200 meters per second for landing, wow, and the Kegel 6 is heavier, but that should still be, that should be lots of fuel for Jeb. That should be awesome. So we'll set a waypoint here. We'll use the waypoint manager and we'll just set a waypoint right where the Kegel 6 is. Oh, this is going to start some controversy, that's for sure. I'm sure Bob will be protesting this record, but Jeb doesn't care. And in fact, the more Bob protests, probably, the more he likes it. <laughs> so, we'll just blow our way out of here from Minmus Station and start our descent. That ought to do it. All right, this is great. I just happened to have the Kegel 3 lying around. I wasn't sure what I was going to be doing with it. It's left over from a couple of previous Minmus landings, most notably rescuing Gilly Kerman and her debris off of the surface of Minmus. But now it's going to be an emergency fuel barge. Well, not really an emergency. Just to extend the mission a little bit. All right, we'll extend the map. Our trajectory is going pretty much right over the waypoint. Sending landing gear, electricity is good. All right, so we just got to time warp ourselves till we're a little bit lower in our trajectory. Ooh, coming over the poles, that's always fun. All right, well, I think it's time to put ourselves onto the retrograde vector and think about killing our velocity. Whoa. Why is it not moving? Oh no, I don't have a remote tech connection. It's red up there in the top left. Did I not extend that Communitron? I don't recall extending that Communitron. Shoot. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. This is dead. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Okay, okay. Um, There is a short range omnidirectional antenna built into all of the capsules and probe cords. That's why I was able to can control it once I undocked from the station, when I was close enough to the station. I am coming right over the Kegel 6. The Kegel 6 does have a communitron on it, an omnidirectional antenna. If I get within range, I might be able to get my connection back and still be able to land this thing. This is not time to panic. Okay, here we are. We're coming close. Uh, according to the waypoint manager, I'm getting close to five kilometers. Maybe five kilometers is the range of the built-in antenna. Uh, no. Uh-oh. No, I'm now under five kilometers, and now my distance is going up. Now's the time to panic. Oh, this is done. I'm pretty sure if it wasn't for the vacuum between us, you could probably hear Jeb's... Oh, as we went flying overhead. Nope, this is it. And in fact, yeah, there was not much to do other than to wait for the Kegel 3's inevitable demise. Yeah. Actually, the crew cabin still survived that initial collision and went up to a crazy high apoapsis of almost 30 kilometers but it's still suborbital so it eventually did come back down to minmus and destroyed itself so it was perhaps a bit of a disappointed crew that left minmus in the end and headed back to minmus station but really all told back at the ksc 2762 science i now have that's what i'm talking about so Disappointing ending, but not a disappointing mission at the start of the next episode. We'll look at how I'm going to spend that. But in the meantime, I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.